I'm a sucker for a good mall story. Throw in a couple of zombies and we have the beginning stew of Friday Black by Nana Kwame coming up today. Did you read it Black Friday every time? Because like my brain just substitutes those because of the holiday. I, or not holiday. It's not a holiday. <laughs> well, in this, it's kind of celebrated as a holiday. I guess uh, Freudian slip there. <laughs> I guess that's a good question because, you know, with globalization, everything being sold, I think most people are somewhat familiar with like what Black Friday is. Uh, but, you know, the online experience of Black Friday isn't exactly the same as in person. Yeah. And I love the history of of that, too. If people don't know, there there is a lot of history uh, economically and historically for the United States of Black Friday that during the Great Depression, Roosevelt was trying to drum up sales. And so they came up with this kind of almost scheme at the time was to get retailers to lower prices, get people in there, spend their money. And that would boost the economy because you would need more workers, more money spent. And it's just kind of that circle of capitalism. And it worked and it kind of stuck. And it was so successful that these large corporations saw the value in it that they could almost take a loss because they were selling so much you know, merchandise on this one day that it literally could save them, you know, for their books. And uh, I, I love how this, this story kind of evolves still with that theory that there's almost two sections of life. You imagine here, uh, and we get into the story, it'll maybe make more sense that, that wealthier people maybe did stay at home and bought online safely from the comforts of their houses and that people that were economically, you know, deprived had to go out and, you know, try to survive the, you know, uh, uh, Friday black in order to get the sales that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting the way that Nana Kwame kind of like, he pits this, you, 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 you hit some key buzzwords there, right? Like the capitalism, uh, unfettered greed is the way I would pit it. And the way Agreed. it just it just dehumanizes people, right? Because you do hear stories about fights, about deaths, uh, about like guns or knives being pulled out. Like while Black Friday is meant to be a celebration of gifts and the idea of commercializing consumables, stuff like that for friends and family, uh, sometimes it gets so competitive that it it is almost like we become the old devolved species that we once were in terms of fighting for resources. It definitely brings out the worst in some people sometimes because there is you know, supply and demand. There's a limited quantity. There is a hyped value behind these products. And then there is artificial um, value to them because of the seasonal need that the, you have to have this gift in order to give it away at a specific time to a specific person to make them feel better or make them think that you love them. Uh, it's all kind of very contrived. And in the story, uh, Kwame does a brilliant job of kind of putting that all together of what is important. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the way that it, it opens up with, you don't know what it is at first, like the description of fingers, like curling through cages and, and Angela <laughs> yelling, get to your stations. Like, you're like, Oh my gosh, is this a war? And, and then it turns out this is, this is, Black Friday, right? This is this kid's, this narrator's fourth Black Friday. He's super competitive, always wants to win the sales of Pole Face with the little TM, okay? Not a hint towards North Face at all. There's, there's no chance there. <laughs> <laughs> but, but everybody participates in this experience willingly, right? Like he knows he's lost limbs or parts of limbs before as, as these people that are dehumanized, these people that are consumed with a virus, right? Like you'll notice that they called it a virus at some point, the idea of this, this unfettered greed. And he willingly steps into it. Why? Because he wants to sell more than anyone else, which is apparently just throwing and chucking clothes at people, which if you've ever been to a Marshall's, like there's a comedian, he talks about how he just like, like the way it's organized. Like he picks up a shirt. He's like, this isn't my size. And then launches it across the store. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what I pictured these people going through. But he's doing it so that he can win the most amount of sales, to your point earlier about Roosevelt, so that he can get the expensive luxury pole face coat for his mother or parka, whatever it was. Yeah, I, I, I feel like um, Nane Kwame was sitting around watching funny Black Friday sale YouTube videos of Walmart uh, security cameras or maybe people, you know, on TikTok or, uh, you know, some type of social media. And, you know, he, he's, he's just like, 
oh my gosh, like this is hilarious of how desperate these people are and how these people are are so obsessed with these material possessions that they will literally sacrifice people's lives over a shirt or a jacket or a TV or something uh, that that's okay. And that everybody just kind of accepts it. Um, and because I imagine this had to come from some realm of realism, right? Because it feels too real. The way that they're foaming at their mouth, the way that they're busting down uh, the, the lady that uh, was there with her daughter and has like the gray scarf on, right? We get these pictures of them almost being mindless zombies for the sole purpose of selling out for consumerism, which, I mean, that's not unreal. Like we do see that on some level for, for Black Friday, but who's to blame here? Do you? Do you ever, have you ever done Black Friday before? Like you yourself personally? Oh yeah, this used to be a big thing for me and my family back in the day. Um, I was probably in my 20s, so this is 20 plus years ago. uh, And it was all the rage. And it was much different back then than it is now. Because now I feel like they start many days prior. uh, They milk it. It's like, it's not Black Friday one day sale anymore. They do it many days ahead of time. Um, the sales go over the whole weekend. You have Cyber Monday where you can buy stuff for special deal sales. But back in the day, they had like hour sales. You had to get to um, you know uh, uh, Nordstrom's from 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. was the only time that you had this stuff on sale. And people would stand at the door and would maul each other, would would stampede each other to get into the store because you had to get the item and you had to get through checkout by a certain time in the morning. And you would camp out, you know, overnight. I remember staying out, you know, in the middle of the night, freezing cold, trying to make sure we got into the store at 4 a.m., uh, you know, to, to open, open, open. They even had funny commercials about that. Uh, you know, when we were kids about people trying to get into the stores early. So it, it's a whole nother beast. It really was. So you asked me about the realism, like how, how it feels. And the, the stories that we have, right? Like that idea of who's to blame for putting us in these situations, right? It is I was sitting around at a Thanksgiving and I think some family members were saying like, oh, the stores, why do the stores open up? at 5 a.m. or why do they open up now at 3 a.m.? Why do they now open up on Thanksgiving Day where that's a day where theoretically, you know, there's some families, they only see each other like on Thanksgiving, right? Because it may be at Christmas time, they have to see the other side, you know, the wife's side family at Christmas. So Thanksgiving's the only time they have with their family. And now to have the opportunity to save a couple bucks come in and divide families in a sense, I think that is that is a real problem, right? And, and I don't think it's the stores because people are choosing. Like you could stay at home if you wanted to, and I get not everybody has the resources to pay full price, but it's still a choice. It's still consumers creating the problem and stores are just using it, right? Like they know they can make a couple of bucks, but they're not creating the problem in my opinion. Agreed. I think it comes down to that our society has become a materialistic society over the last hundred years uh, ever since you know the end of World War II and the American dream has morphed into something you know drastically different uh, than it was 70, 80, 100 years ago to where you are happy by the material crap that you have. I need a bigger TV. I need a nicer car. I need a bed. I need pillowcases. I need shoes. All of these things are the stuff that are going to make you happy, fill that void in your life. Uh, And not everybody, but I think it's become ingrained in our society for a lot of people that those material things are almost like a drug. Uh, It's a high where, you know, you get that that hit, that dopamine rush of um, I got a good deal. Somebody else didn't get a good good didn't get a good deal. And I did uh, or that you got one over on the the big corporation. <laughs> you know, I got the 50% off. I didn't pay full price. <laughs> and uh, I think that that's, it's almost like a game to some people. And unfortunately, uh, it, 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 it can ruin lives and, and uh, you know, friendships or whatever. Um, and it's sad that people would put material possessions over people, especially in like the scenario you said, where it feels like a war that people are fighting over a shirt like a shirt. <laughs> well, you even had the mom, remember, like later on in the story, the gray scarf woman, she lost her child and her husband, but she's like, 
TV, like speaking Friday Black, like speaking the mindless consumerism. She sold her family out for this TV that was a couple hundred bucks cheaper, right? Uh, it, it's sad, but it's also to your point about the realism, it's very true. Like that is something that is happening where we trade in family time for the cost of a couple hundred dollars of savings. I guess too, to bring up your point as well of uh, I am no longer a teacher, as many people know, and my job, I had to work on Thanksgiving this year. And the people that I was interacting with had no care that I didn't get to spend time with my family. They just wanted me to take care of them that it didn't matter that I, a person, didn't get to spend time with my family. It was important what stuff they could buy or what deal or sale they could get. Uh, that's just that's how important it is in our society to be able to purchase things. Uh, and not necessarily, I know if it's a bad thing. Maybe it is. I, it's probably personal belief. But I think that if you view it from the perspective of this story, then yes, the, the idea of capitalism and consumerism has gotten to a point where it is being a negative impact on our society if we're treating people in the manner that they treat each other in Friday Black. What do you think about the ending where he's doing all of this for the parka or whatever, and I think it's the last parka at the end when he has a choice to save a coworker and he grabs that, which I think, if I understood the story correctly, was meant to be for his mom, why he was there, and he throws it to save the girl's life, but then immediately turns around and says, who's next? Right. How did you interpret kind of that ending? I took it as a positive ending, and I know that's rare for me in sort of a way that, I don't know, I, I, I have so many feelings about the ending. Uh, one, yes, I feel that he made the right choice that the materialism possession that he was going to give to his mom to prove that he loved her, uh, the co-worker's life was more important. Awesome, positive. But it also made me start thinking about who are some of the times the people that we spend the most time with? I mean, if you, you there are charts out there where if you look at a chart of your life of where you spend your time at home, work, bathroom, sleep, eating, all those things, if you look through your whole life from like 18 to retirement age of like 67, 70 years old, the people you spend the most time with are not family, they're not friends, they're coworkers. And maybe some coworkers could be families, uh, coworkers could be friends, but he made the choice to save his coworker because that's the person he might be closest with. It, it felt like in the story, he really didn't even love his mom. He was just trying to prove to her that he loved her more than maybe his siblings or that he was the most important one that loved her. So I don't know. I have a lot of mixed feelings about the ending. It feels happy, but it also feels like kind of sad in a way that he valued this coworker more than trying to prove his love to his mother. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, no, I hadn't really thought about it from that perspective because I viewed it as who's next so that he can keep doing the consumerism. Because if you remember, we this is his fourth Black Friday, so that's a really good point that he has probably spent more time with some of his coworkers than other people in his life. But I also go back to, you know, maybe some of the confusion that I have is his third Black Friday. Remember, there was no reward. There's there's no bonus. Like like, But he still competed to be the top because he had that keeping up with the Joneses insecurity, uh, power play. Like there, there's something driving him to constantly feed into the engine of consumerism. And he knows it's dangerous. He knows he can lose his arm to these these people infected with this disease but he still buys into the system anyways. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's just a very interesting story. One thing that I was, I kept coming back to was, um, how old do you think this kid is? That's a good question. Um, I, I felt teenager, but at the same time, he's done this several years. So I'm like, okay, he's probably in college working, you know, like when he comes back to kind of like make pay some of the bills is how I felt. Okay, I could see that. I kept thinking that he felt way too wise to be young, and not that you can't be wise when you're young, don't get me wrong. Um, it just from personal experience, I was not wise when I was young. Uh, but he he feels wise beyond his years, so to speak. And I guess I just, yeah, I pictured him like mid-20s, 
um, maybe still having to live at home because, you know, obviously this feels a little bit dystopian the way that society is going and that money is still tough. Uh, it doesn't feel like he makes a lot of money. Maybe he is going to school. I felt like, though, that he was a little bit older than your traditional maybe college student, like maybe a little older than 20 or 22, like pushing into 25. Like there is a little bit of resentment of that's what driving and pushing would be the best is he feels like he's too good for this job. Maybe the unnamed narrator, man, rough, rough life at eight fifty an hour paying off those college loans. If he did go <laughs> <laughs> indeed, <laughs> All right, guys, we'll leave a playlist down below if we cover any more of this uh, author stories. I did have my eye on a couple other in this collection of stories from Friday Black. Let us know what story you would want to see us cover or talk about next. It's been a pleasure having spending some time here with you guys. My name's Benuna. Peace. Jacket. Jacket. <laughs>